Hi everybody, I'm Kira, the teen librarian here at Rawlings, and I'm excited to start off this summer's teen and tween virtual uh, programming. Um, so I'm thrilled to introduce comic and graphic novel creator, uh, Christina Maldonado Badhand, and she's joining us from 360, I think 360 Arts today. Um, and I am gonna hand it off to her and check out the comments because I put her websites in there for you guys to um, to check out after you watch the program and participate in it. Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Christina Maldonado Badhand. I'm a graphic designer, illustrator, also educator. Um, I've been drawing comics for a really long time. Um, <clears throat> I actually say that I've been drawing since I could hold a pencil. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about character creation because you can't really have comics without our characters, right? So um, we're going to go over a bunch of different types of characters. You know, you can have superhero characters, you can have regular everyday characters, monsters, creatures. I know a lot of kids out there love creating anthro creatures. Uh, my stepdaughter in particular loves those types of things. So we're gonna get started with um, just a quick overview of some characters that I have created. And then we're actually going to get drawing and I'm gonna show you a little bit of expressions and how to do a character sheet. So first off, I'm gonna share my screen and we'll go into my uh, oops, okay, I'm gonna share our entire screen here. All righty, hopefully everybody can see this. Oops, there we go. All right, so we are gonna talk a little bit about creating headshots of a character. So these are headshots of characters that I created for a comic called Perception. This comic has been going for a really, really long time. We actually haven't published it yet because it's been going so long. So this was a story I started with my best friend when we were actually 14. So it has been a long, long process, um, but it's our baby. So we want to make sure it's perfect before we set it out into the world. So you guys are getting a little bit of a sneak peek right now of um, some of these characters because hopefully we're getting closer to getting it out there. But these are my headshots for my characters. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do a character for a comic. You can just draw the headshot like this and you can add little things in the corners to kind of give you an idea of what that character is. Um, you can do the full body character sheet, which is what we're gonna get into. Talk about like the style that they wear. You can fully develop them out as far as things that they like, their type of music or the their favorite food, birth dates, things like that. You can go all over the place with characters. So these are my main, main characters for this comic. So there are six good guys, one bad guy, and then we have another character who is, um, she's kind of like the uh, catalyst character. So she causes a lot of the uh, change in our comic. But over here we've got our three main ones, as you can see, there is some of the details behind them kind of give you an idea about some of their powers. So Psy can control flowers and earth and stuff. So she has the ability to communicate with plants. Balance has the ability to do both fire and water. So she's a dual character. And then this guy has some really secretive uh, powers that I can't quite tell you about because it'll ruin our comic. But you can kind of get a little bit of a hint about what they do based on the things I put in the back here. Um, and then we have our other characters. This guy's actually a dragon. This guy's a vampire. And then this guy's an angel. And that's our main bad guy, which you can kind of tell from the creepy serial killer mask, right? All right, so moving on to how you might develop a character into a character sheet and how characters can evolve over time. This is my main character from my uh, graphic novel named Cowie. And it's a Polynesian tale of Beauty and the Beast. She has gone through a lot of different changes from the first release of this comic. It was originally released as a single issue comic. And um, there's a few things that I did that weren't quite as uh, 
good as I wanted them to be for the comic. I got a couple of things culturally wrong. I am a Shichangu Lakota and Cherokee t uh, artist, so I'm not Polynesian. So there was a few things about the character that I got wrong about the world and some people came to me with the feedback. So thankfully I was able to revisit it and collaborate with Hawaiian artists and a couple other people to get her really right. So as you can see on my right hand here, these are some of the ways that she's evolved um, over the years. This was the original concept. She had kind of the longer, straighter hair. Some of the people who helped me develop her actually had more wavy hair. So she started actually looking more like the ones who helped me. Um, it's kind of funny how that works when you draw things. But this is her character evolution in a sense. She started out with the straight hair, kind of regular bathing suit as we started developing her more. I wanted her to be a little bit more sporty. So this one on the left hand is actually what she looks like in the graphic novel now. She's got a little bit more of a surfer type of style um, and she's a little bit more tomboyish. And then down here, these three images are actually part of the comic. So she does have a little bit of her girly side, but um, you can kind of see how she's evolved. And uh, this is her brief character sheet here with her standing, her hand on her hip, this is her pose. And then I've got a little bit of sketches of what her um, face might look like or what her actions might be within the comic. So moving on to the different types of characters that you can create, this little guy was actually created for a video game camp that I did last summer. So he is actually based on a uh, spider his name is Iktomi, because in my culture, our trickster spirit is a spider. And he is kind of learns a lot of lessons. He's a character that in a lot of our oral histories goes through a lot of uh, funny trials and stuff to teach people lessons of what you should and shouldn't do or um, ways that you can mess up or make mistakes and learn from them. So for our video game, he kind of became the mascot of our video game camp. And all of my students actually came up with their own characters to kind of work with him. And he was the one who caused a lot of the conflict that made our characters go and do the different things that they were gonna do in their video game. So developing his character, I wanted him to look a little bit like a spider. So clearly I've got his hood. He's got like the little circles that kind of look like eyes. These little stripes here are similar to spider legs. He's actually got it on his back too. And then he has a dream catcher on his hip because uh, Iktomi actually brought the dream catcher in a lot of the old stories. So he's a little bit more of a modern take on Iktomi. Normally when uh, you read about the stories about him, he is always wearing red, yellow, black, and white, which is our four direction colors. And he usually has circles on him in some sense. And um, a lot of the times he has buckskin or um, kind of older style dress, but we wanted to make him more modern and make sure that he was a good representation for the students that were gonna be participating in this video game clamp. So this is his little chibi version. If you guys like anime, you'll know what that means. Um, and this is his little avatar. We were able to actually make it into a pin and everything and uh, animate him. So, I'm gonna move us into doing a character sheet um, so that you guys can kind of follow along. I know sometimes it takes a bit for us to draw things and to get things uh, situated. If anybody has any questions, please feel free um, to put them in the comments. I'm not sure how they work on here, but um, I don't mind stopping and letting people know uh, their questions and things. So I know that presentation went a little bit quick and the reason I want that to be uh, kind of the quick part of it is because as we get into doing these character shoots, I really want everybody to be able to follow along and see how to create a character sheet. There's a couple of different ways that uh, go into developing a character and researching a character. I don't know how many of you guys might use Pinterest, but it is one of my favorite um, things to use in terms of getting a vision board. So creating a character sheet, sometimes if you have an idea for a character and you might wanna do a little bit more research, I'm really big on that research part of things, then you can pull up 
Pinterest or do a kind of inspiration board and you can pin all these different images that give you ideas and inspiration for your characters. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple of my Pinterest boards. Specifically, I'll give you a sneak peek into Cowie. Um, so you're, everybody's getting kind of a sneak peek here. And then we will go into creating a character sheet. So, let's see. Oh, okay. Gotta do it this way again. Okay. So this is my character sheet for Cowie. As you can see right now, there is a lot of reptiles and things in there because some of the characters within my comic are very reptilian. There's a lot of flowers and this is my environment. I look at it as environments also are a big character to your story, right? It's kind of funny to think of an environment as its very own character, but they are. You know, you think about some of your favorite movies or um games or cartoons, those games and cartoons wouldn't be unique if it wasn't for the world that they were in. So in a lot of ways, that world also has its very own character. So as you can see in this character sheet, or not character sheet, this um, reference page that I have, my little vision board, I've got a little, a bunch of little different aspects that lead into what my world might look like in uh, my comic. So I've got tons of plants on here. I've got lots of water studies because there's a lot of water having to do with this. I actually have a character named Lava Kitty and he is a, uh, he's a jaguar that basically looks like lava. And there's actually a lot of other people who did very similar type of characters. So I looked at some of their art and how they made the lava glow and maybe how, um, how they made it flow to make a character kind of the stonish look. This is probably the closest to how my character ended up coming out. And then I've got a lot of really creepy creatures and stuff because I have some creatures in there. I have a bunch of turtles because my comic takes place on the back of a giant turtle and her name is Honu. So I did a lot of studies to my turtle characters here. There's more on the island. You can see there's lots of different things here. Um, as we get farther down, there's more studies on how hair flows, things like that. So pulling up our sheet of paper here, we're going to start kind of mapping out how we would do a character sheet and how we would get into our character um, expressions and things. So there we go. So I use Photoshop. Um, if you are following along, using a pencil and paper is totally fine. If you do like to play around with digital things, if you're using Procreate, anything like that, that's fine. Um, but I pull up usually a blank sheet of paper. And if I'm starting out a character sheet, how I might start is by having my character on this side and doing expressions on my right hand side. So. For my poses, I might kind of play around with some gestures. So let's say I want to do a superhero type of character. So I might kind of play around with, do I want to do like a flying pose, maybe like this, or a more battle type of pose. You know, where their, their powers can be coming out. Um, this helps a lot to think about what character you're going to draw. If it's going to be an anthropomorphic character, maybe do you want to do like a side view of them running or do you want to have them doing more of just a sitting still kind of pose? So for that example, if I'm doing, we'll do a human and an animal so that you guys can follow along. So thinking about this character, I want it to be kind of a superhero type of thing. Maybe we'll have it have a little cat creature as a friend. So maybe I want my cat creature standing by it like that. So that kind of gives me some ideas. So <clears throat> that's my like brainstorm sheet. I'm now going to start actually sketching out because I've got kind of a good idea in my brain. Now, if you 
want to continue sketching on your brainstorm sheet um, until you get a good idea of what you might want to do, then please, by all means, keep doing that. But I think I've got a good idea of where I want to go with this character. So I'm going to roughly sketch out my character in shapes. This is some of the easiest way for you to get the proportions right. And I'm just gonna basically sketch it out by shapes. And I actually want them to be holding a certain type of weapon. So I'm gonna sketch those in there. <clears throat> and then for their little kitty creature, I'm gonna do the same thing and kind of just sketch out by shapes how this cat may look. Okay. <clears throat> so I have a basic pose down, right? Now I can go in and if you're sketching this with a pencil, you wanna go really, really light so that you can erase all of these circles and stuff because this was just blocking down to get our character on paper. Um, now I'm gonna go in close and I'm gonna start drawing out my details. I would wanna use a pencil for this if I was drawing um, traditionally, but since I'm doing on the computer, I'm gonna go in with my inks already because I can press the undo button. The undo button is amazing when you guys start using more digital painting stuff. So I'm gonna draw just on the outside of my shapes here. And I might wanna fix some of my lines here as I go, but right now I'm just kind of getting a feel for the outside of my character. All right. So I'm gonna make my, um, I'm gonna make this a little bit lighter so that I can see my lines. This is why it's really important to draw that with a pencil. Um, so that you can erase and draw on top without conflicting with the lines that you sketched. So I think I want my character to be a little bit more voluptuous than what I sketched. So I'm gonna go back in and kind of add a little bit more depth in my under sketch so that I can follow it better with my inks. So this can help sometimes if you are struggling with muscle mass for your characters, or if you're struggling with how um, hands might be placed. You just kind of do it by shape. I know it looks like super messy at first. Um, this is why I do it with the pencil. I don't know if anybody's seen Rhea and the Last Dragon, but that is kind of on my brain a lot right now. So our character may end up looking kind of like somebody from Fang, <laughs> just a heads up. Um, and that can happen sometimes when you've got uh, character influences on your brain and stuff. Okay. So mistakes are one of the best ways to learn with your characters. So if it's not looking the way you want it to, don't worry, don't give up. Sometimes if you just follow it through, you come out with some really cool characters that you might not have realized that you can use later. Um, 
So I am very big on learning from your mistakes and just kind of following through with them. So if, um, if you're starting to get frustrated, just take a deep breath and kind of get back at it. So let's see, I'm gonna do a little more of a wave to my hair. So I've been drawing characters and um, like fan art and stuff for a very, very long time. Um, I actually started out drawing Sailor Moon characters. Uh, my sister and my brother actually showed me how to do a lot of cool characters. And um, of course, my brother being my older brother showed me mostly how to draw muscles and guns and things that, you know, boys like to draw usually. Um, so I actually did do a ton of Dragon Ball Z fan art when I was in high school as well. And as you're starting to draw things, sometimes it's really fun to play around with the different styles. So I think fan art is a great way to learn how to draw. Um, you can play with basically doing the Dragon Ball Z type of style. Looks very different than Sailor Moon. Clearly, Steven Universe looks incredibly different from all of those. And I love Steven Universe. Sometimes it's fun to do those draw this in your uh, style challenges and to draw characters in like Disney style. Kind of gives you a little bit more versatility with them. And you know, characters are important for everything. And then you have them as your video game avatars. You've got them um, in films. That's what actors play. They play the characters in different things. So being a character artist is a pretty cool thing. I actually wouldn't say that I personally am a character artist. I tend to like the story side of things more. But like I said, with um, that vision board and kind of how you can get your references, even story itself can be considered a character because all of these things need to work together in order to create a good story, right? Now, clearly the more time you spend on creating characters, the better they're gonna look. So um, this one's gonna be pretty rough just to give us an idea of our character sheet. But if I wanted to get more detailed in kind of the things that you saw in my presentation, then I would spend a lot more time kind of developing them and working on my details, working on, um, kind of the coloring and everything like that. So this little shape that I did up here, this is called a little T. This is, uh, everybody has a, a T on their face. So it's your eyebrows, your nose. See right here, it's like a little triangle. Um, and I do this to make sure that everything is symmetrical on my character. And it helps me figure out where my eyes are gonna go.
So now if I turn that off, see, I've got a pretty um, flat character there. I can play with doing her weapons so that it looks like she's holding something. And then I'm going to work on my key. And we'll go into kind of the details around her of what a character she is. I'm going to do kind of like a, a scythe type of weapon. And I might draw this out um, next to her so I can really define it out. Um, sometimes these character sheets, you can make them super detailed so that they stand on their own, or sometimes they can just be for your reference so that you um, can look back at how you developed the character's details and things, um, especially in terms of like a comic or an animation or game that helps a lot because you are gonna be drawing or using this character a lot. And so it kind of can be your own reference to make sure that you get your details right. Which sounds kind of funny because when you're creating your own character, you think that you would know your details, but you would be surprised how often you mess up details <laughs> when you draw a lot because comics and all that kind of stuff, you end up getting really tired after a while as you're staring at it. So you can very easily mix up your details. Okay. Kitty, I'm going to go back in here and make sure that I've got my kitty's anatomy right. My original sketch, I don't think, had enough um, detail there. Because that's going to be super important. There we go. So maybe I might want to actually put the kitty's tail coming across my character's ankle. So when you're drawing um, even animals and things, this doing by shapes really does help a lot. Um, it's because it, you can really do it for people. You can do it for horses, dragons, kitties, like I just did. Um, and it kind of helps figure out the muscle mass underneath um, what your character looks like. And I know it looks super messy when you're first sketching it out, but it definitely does help with proportions and everything. Just remember to draw really lightly, otherwise you can make a mess of your drawing. Okay. Back in here, we're gonna do the T again, just like we did for my person up there, but this time it's gonna be for our kitty. Right. Now I've got my person and my kitty kind of sketched out, right? So super brief character. Um, like I said, if we want to go more in and fix some of these lines, you can go in and add a little bit more detail. Um, her arms are kind of flimsy, so I want to make sure that I add a little bit more muscle mass to that.
and clearly the more time you spend, the more detailed, right? And sometimes when you're thinking about creating a character, if you get a little bit stumped, it's nice to do some like combining creatures together type of thing. It's one of the things I love about Avatar Last Airbender is like all the different creatures that are kind of combos of other things. So now I can do things like add details to my character. You want to add like the wristbands I just added. Could add jewelry. Can add a little bit more details onto the type of fabric that they wear. Can add tattoos. I want her her pants to be really baggy, kind of like a silky type of material. So I'm going to just go through and make sure that I've got lots of different folds in her fabric. And then her boots are actually going to be kind of plain. I might want to do a little bit more detail on my kitty. So now I have my two characters that I just kind of came up with for my character sheet. And now is the fun part. You get to kind of try and think about who they are and what they like and more about what makes them a character, right? So first things first, you got to come up with a character name. So let's see, what would I name her? I think I'm going to name her Amara. So what you can do with these character sheets is you can write out your character info down here and you can do expressions up here. So that's what we're going to do. So down here, we're going to say name. And her name is going to be Amara. And then the cat's name is going to be Sif. And she is, let's see, we're looking at an age for our character. I'm going to say that she is 18. And then Sif is, let's say, eight. In cat ears. So this is basically just to get some details for your character. Now you can figure out the world that they come from. Um, you can figure out if they have any powers or skill sets, if they're a different race, if they're not human, if they're elves or something like that. Um, you can come up with a specific type of character that Sif might be. I don't know what kind of 
I wouldn't say he's a cat. I'd say he's like a cat. Maybe think about some kind of monster thing that he could be. Um, her world, let's say that it's a post apocalyptic, oops, it's a post apocalyptic sci fi is where she's going to be from. So I might come up with a planet name or something for where she came from. I can color this and give her a little bit more information there. I can kind of play with her expressions and stuff like we're gonna do up here, but this is a really good way to brainstorm your character. Um, good stories do really well when you have a character that is fully developed um, so that you don't break character. You know, if a character is really kind and ambitious, but then suddenly they act totally different in the next arc of your story, then people are gonna notice and they might get a little frustrated because you know, if, if you have favorite characters, you get mad if they don't act like the character that you fell in love with, right? One of the examples of that is um, The Hobbit. For me, I really loved Lord of the Rings when I was growing up and Legolas is one of my favorite characters. And when they made the new Hobbit movies and they redid Legolas into the story, they made him kind of a jerk. And in the in the book and, you know, in Lord of the Rings, he's actually really playful and he is very childlike and sweet. But in the new Hobbit movie, they made him kind of like controlling, kind of arrogant. He was not really the Legolas that I knew in um, the books and everything. So it definitely frustrated me. It was like they kind of forgot that part of what he was supposed to be like. And especially in The Hobbit, he was what should have been younger. So um, he wouldn't have been as like moody as he was. And they also forgot a very key point of um, the elves in Lord of the Rings actually die of heartbreak. So if somebody had broken his heart the way Tariel did, he actually probably wouldn't have made it to Lord of the Rings. Um, he probably would have passed away because they die of broken hearts. But uh, yeah, that's kind of just the details that are important to when you, you create characters. So now I'm gonna go a little bit more into my expressions here. And how I might do that. This is kind of a fun thing about um, characters and creating different expressions is you actually can change a character's expression totally by just changing their eyebrows. There's a couple of quick rules to creating them. Um, oops, and I'm sorry, I have a three-year-old walking up to me. Hold on just a sec. Okay. All right, so how I would do that is I would start with my character's face. And this is also to get you practicing how to draw your character multiple times, because that is super important. Um, the same with them acting like the character that you created and following along with what their character is. You also want to make sure that they look the same, right? You don't want the, the character to randomly change in the middle of your story. Um, unless it's like a, a plan change, it's just you don't want them to look like a completely different character when they didn't weren't supposed to. Okay. So if I'm drawing a grumpy face here, You see, I kind of just have a, a basic like grumpy expression for her. Now, I would draw this multiple times if I was using a um, 
if I was using traditional means, but for digital and to prove kind of my thing about the changing the eyebrows, I'm actually gonna just copy and paste the one that I just drew also to save us some time. Now, if I want her to look happy, I actually don't really have to change her eyes. This is just a, a quick way of learning the expressions. You know, you can get a lot more detailed when you spend more time, like we said, but if I'm trying to get an idea of my expressions, all I gotta do is make sure I change my eyebrows and my mouth. So my nose and my eyes can stay the total same, but my nose and my mouth is gonna, or not my nose, <laughs> my uh, mouth and my eyebrows are gonna change to create the different emotions for this character. So, oops. Ah, sorry about that, hold on. There we go. Okay. I want her to look happy. I'm gonna change her eyebrows and I'm gonna change her mouth, right? So this is just a quick way to change the expressions of the character just by changing those two little things. And it can work on our kitty, it can work on our person. There's just those eyebrows and that mouth is super important. You don't even realize how important it is until like you kind of see it out like this, right? I wanted her to look really upset. I would put the eyebrows down here. I would add tears if I wanted her to be crying. Do that to make her mad, okay. So you kind of get the idea by changing those eyebrows and that mouth, there's a lot of different expressions you can get within your character. Now, if I'm doing the same for our kitty, it's the same type of deal. Um, so this is actually the fun part with doing animals is you can kind of play a little bit more with their ears. Um, since our little Sif kitty here has really big ears, I might sketch out kind of playing with putting his ears down if he's sad. So same thing if I wanted to make sure that I have my proportions right, I might sketch it out. I'm not going to draw straight the way I did with her because I'm not as confident in my quick kitty drawing skills. So I'm gonna sketch out maybe how I want his ears to go down. So he's gonna look a little bit more like a bunny. And then I'll do one with his ears perked up. In the sense of characters with ears, you can like kind of use it the same way as we're using the um, eyebrows. How you change the ears really change how your character is feeling. Especially if they don't have eyebrows, as you can see, Sif doesn't. He's not a, a humanoid type of kitty. So I'm gonna put his ears point down here.
That's a couple of, oops, I didn't save that there, but that's a couple of different sketches for our, um, how to lay out his kind of expressions. So since animals are a little different than people, I might put a little bit more detail into him. Um, but again, doing character sheets like this, it's just really a good way to get a basic idea And then you would move on to doing gestures. So what does your character do um, within the story? Do they fly? Do they run around? Do they jump and kind of fight? So if I were creating a character sheet following this for these characters, um, after I figured out essentially what my characters look like, I might kind of jot down some colors I might want to use for them really quick. Um, if I wanted to do, like, I know what color of skin I want her to be. When I have more time to, like, flush it out, I might go back and do that. But I could kind of put some of my... Um, some of my skin colors and things briefly down so that I know what colors I want to use on her. Um, this kind of plays a little bit more into like your color theory and kind of figuring out what, uh, what type of environment your character is in because place is super important. If they're in a deserty type of place, then the colors they might use are a little bit more dull. Um, a little bit more like um, earthy. So I might use this for her tattoo over here and some of my colors. I might use some gold for her character. Oop, if you guys hear a toddler in the background, that would be my son, just a heads up. There's a couple of the colors that I might use to color her. I think I would have Sif be a little bit more of a darker bluish gray because I like maybe using him as like an, a sphinx or something type of character. So those are some uh, colors I might use for that character. Um, if I go and create another sheet of paper for my gestures, kind of similar to the first page when we were kind of trying to figure out a pose for our character sheet, I might do the same thing for figuring out gestures of how my character moves. So since she's got, um, those swords, I might kind of play with just quick little gestures about how um, how she moves. Maybe she jumps, maybe she fights kind of like this. See, I'm just doing a lot of the same stuff that I did when I created her just to get an idea of how she might move. And maybe some poses that she might be using if I'm using her in a video game or in a um, comic type of setting. If I want her character to be maybe a little bit sillier, I might have her like shrug in her shoulders or something. If, if she's a jokester or something, I might play with how she would joke around. 
if she's a dancer, I would play with the different ways that she'd dance. Yeah. Sorry about that. All right. If she's petting her cats, she's petting Sif, I'd play with maybe how it looks like when she interacts with Sif. Sif's not quite big enough to ride, but if he were, I would do maybe like the ways that Sif looks when he's running or riding. Maybe he has a particular type of magic where he can get big. Also, I would play with like, if he gets scared, So you can kind of see these are just quick little gestures of how my characters might move around. And we're getting close to time here, so I'm gonna stop my share screen and see if there was any questions or anything um, and kind of finish this up here. But you can see these are kind of like ways that your characters can interact and jump around. So these gesture drawings are super helpful when you're developing your characters. Um, I use them a lot in my comics for sure, especially doing comic books. There's a storyboarding phase that, um, that you use to uh, develop out your comic pages and make sure that your panels flow pretty well. Um, so yeah, so since we've got a little bit of time, I wanna see if there was any questions. I see there's some commentary in there that I didn't see. And yeah, I, I loved Avatar Last Airbender. That's one of my favorites. And um, yeah, Fang is one of my favorites in, in Raya the Last Dragon. I think I actually liked Fang a little bit more than Hark because they had the kitties and they were cool looking. But, um, but yeah, if anybody does have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, there's also the in my website that was shared, there's a spot that I have called um, get in touch and that area you can actually message me. I really like to keep that open for people to message. Um, I work a lot with students and a lot in a lot of different programs. And I've actually had it where a couple students reached out to me later and I was able to connect them to places where now they're actually doing jobs in comics. So that um, that has been a really good feature on my website that I love to keep. Um, so I'm gonna pull that up real quick so you can see where that's at. Um, let's see, oops, there we go. So right here, if you scroll to the bottom of my website, so this is this is Bad Hand Illustrations. This is where you can get in contact with me. And um, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the web page. There is a spot called get in touch and that goes directly to my emails. So I've been able to use that as a place for people to ask for reading recommendations or if you are doing characters and you have more questions later or you're starting out into doing cons and things like that. I've also organized comic conventions in the past um, and I've had some pretty exciting uh, pretty exciting things where I've been able to give opportunities to young artists. So definitely keep an eye on that. Um, for Indigenous Pop X, which was the first Comic-Con I, I directed here, we actually had a whole uh, novice artist section where I was able to give people con tables for free. So if that's something you guys are interested in, wanting to get more into doing um, conventions and video games and comics and all that fun stuff, then please just reach out, let me know, and I would love to connect with you guys and uh, help you out. As you can see, this little furball on me is my son. He's three and he just upset his a cat. So he's pouting because the cat's mad at him now. Um, so I apologize for that. But yeah, if, uh, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to reach out to me on that website. Um, if you don't have any questions in the chat right now, I guess we can wait a couple more minutes. We've got five minutes left. So if you do have any burning questions, please let me know. Okay. 
I just popped back on. Um, that was really awesome. I just have to say, I was watching, like, oh, it's so cool. And I thought it was so great how um, I'm not a gifted, naturally gifted um, graphic artist, but the way that you use the shapes. And then when, it, oh, that was so genius. I was like, maybe I could do this if I did it like that. <laughs> anyway, um, and also just your offer at the end. Um, you know, for people to get in touch is, is uh, immensely generous. And I just want to thank you. I'm a teen librarian, so it means a lot to me that that you offer that. Um, so thank you. And thank you for everybody watching because I think it's amazing. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Of course, <laughs> like I said, it, it kind of came up because I had a student um, reach out a few years after a comic thing. And uh, I was able to connect him with some people that I know, and now he's working on his first comic. So I was like, I'm gonna keep that open because I, I personally love the networking side of things and I'm really big on uplifting other artists. And if I can't do something, then I usually know somebody who can. So that's important to build that connection and that network, especially as you guys are becoming artists. It's like, don't, don't step on other artists to get there. And, you know, all of us draw inspiration from other things in each other, but it's really important to make sure that you share the love and that people know where you got those ideas from and things. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that little, that little guy. Yep. You all right? Yeah, this is Coda. It stinks when the kitty's mad at you. I know I have kitties. It's no fun when they're mad. He also just spent the past two minutes trying to put said kitty in a box. So <laughs> he's totally, that was warranted. <laughs> awesome. Uh, just, mine get mad at me because I don't get up early enough. They want their breakfast. Like, get up, get up. But their they're paws on the head. Uh -uh. I had a, a cat that would lick your hair and then she'd bite and pull to try and wake yeah. you up. They're clever. <laughs> yeah. It's so cute. <laughs> it's not as cute when they're pulling your hair. <laughs> she is adorable, but when she does that, I'm like, oh, cat, not okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't, I don't know if um, there's anything else you want me to touch on while we've got this extra minute or um you know i didn't see any questions but usually if there's anything else then just let me know <laughs> yeah um and i'll keep an eye on the facebook page uh, to see if anybody comments later um yeah i think it was really cool i enjoyed it a lot um so thanks so much um this was a really great program and I'm excited to have been able to introduce you to all of our library folks. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, take good care. And I think we'll just end us a, a minute or so late, early. And, um, but it'll still be up there so people can watch it if they miss it live. And, yep. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much. And, yeah, like the Thanks so much. Take care. All right. Sounds good. And yeah, reach out if anybody has any questions later. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye.